Well, we may think of the cuckoo bird as a cute little bird, maybe even one that likes to chirp on the hour every hour. Here's the shocking truth. Cuckoos are actually one of nature's most infamous parasites. And as Andrea Anderson Polk explains, there are plenty of them trying to invade your nest. Andrea Anderson Polk, professional counselor and author, compares cuckoo birds, nature's master manipulator and imposter, to relationships that leave us feeling drained, confused, lost, and empty. Her new book, The Cuckoo Syndrome, helps us recover the lost pieces of ourselves, discover meaning in suffering, and transform our pain into purpose. Well, Andrea Anderson Polk is here with more, and we welcome you to the studio, to the show today. Good to have you here. Cuckoo birds are actually classified as brood parasites. What makes them such? Yeah, so they're cruel and clever creatures. They're not this wooden figurine that. that we think about in our childhood. So brood parasites take advantage of other people without making any useful return. So they're essentially nature's infamous predators, um, master manipulators, users, and deceivers. Wow. Well, when it comes to people in our lives, you say that the cuckoos in our lives <laughs> take many forms. Talk about what that looks like and why you've used the cuckoo bird as a, a sort of a comparison to what happens in our lives with toxic people, toxic relationships. Well, the concept for the book originated during a particularly difficult season in my own life. I was navigating a relationship with a close family member that left this very confusing, um, painful, sort of crazy-making feeling in my life. And I had been through a lot of healing and counseling. I'd forgiven this person had compassion, understood why they did the things that they did. And despite the boundaries I was setting and the, um, you know, guarding my heart and having more of a surfacey relationship, I really felt smothered and suffocated by their needs, their unmet expectations, their emotions. And when I would try to make room for myself in the relationship, I felt like I was gradually losing myself. So this, the analogy of the cuckoo bird that was simultaneously yes. looking into at the time really gave me this breakthrough aha moment where I realized this relationship is one-sided and it's yeah. it's really exhausting me trying to please this person. I was gradually losing myself. So what did you do? That so was different I, than all those other things you listed that you'd done that were the right thing to do. It gave me the courage to have a voice, and it was the first time I felt compassion for myself and, and looking at this dynamic with this, this cuckoo bird. And so I made room for myself in the relationship. I explained to this person how I was feeling, and uh, sadly, they couldn't reciprocate. And I, I didn't want to sever the relationship. You know, I wanted to continue to guard my heart, but found that it just the interactions continued to be hurtful. So I no longer felt this um, silent suffering and this feeling of feel selfish. Guilty? I did. I felt extremely guilty and selfish. And the cuckoo analogy is what freed me of that mm -hmm. because I realized this person doesn't want to put in the mutual reciprocal work to make changes. And so when I meet with clients in my clinical practice, I tell them, if you feel guilty and selfish, that's how you know you're on you're the on right, the you're on the right path. Right? Because you know, we can be so yeah. used to being people pleasers and feeling guilty when we make room for our needs, especially if the other person um, doesn't really care to hear what you have to say, think, or feel. Yeah. Do we all have cuckoos in our lives? We all do. Even if it's not an unhealthy relationship with another person, for example, it could be a mentor, it could be a pastor, a friend, a colleague, a um, significant other, a spouse. If it's not an unhealthy relationship with a person, it can be an unhealthy relationship within yourself. So talk about that. What does yes. that look like? <laughs> so it could look like uh, perfectionism. Um, it could look like addictive behaviors. It could be something that seems like a good thing or even a God thing, but it starts to take over your life. And it could be even um, ministry or work that becomes your primary source of worth and value. And then 
same thing as in a relationship. You gradually lose yourself to this insatiable appetite of your own ego that wants to grow bigger and bigger and wants more. Are we able to recognize that in ourselves? You know, most people don't want to face things like that in, that would be perceived as flaws or problems in their character or their personality. I mean, how do we begin to pull that apart if it's within us? Yes, that's a great question. You really have to get to the point where you want to do the hard work, where the suffering in your life becomes greater than the fear of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's not an easy five-step process. You know, it's really partnering with a counselor, you know, and with the Holy Spirit to do the work. It's hard, but it's the right kind of hard because when you face the deepest truths of your life, that's where the freedom happens. But facing that truth is the first most important step. Can't go over it, can't go under it, have to go through it. Have to right? go through it, yes. Wow. Even if it leads to a breakdown, you can break through yes. and come out on the other side with You story. mentioned the religious cuckoo is the most insidious one of all. Talk yes. about that. What I've seen with toxic religion or religious abuse, when people are using their relationship with the Lord or the Word of God to intimidate, manipulate, and control, there's really a, a dual betrayal. You know, there's the, the trauma or the injury in that relationship, but then if, especially if that person is, you know, an authoritative figure yeah. uh, in religious circles, then the person also feels that trauma like I said, in the relationship, but then the relationship with God, they feel shame. Well, and sometimes I think when it is somebody that is um, like in a, a leadership position, you question your own evaluation of it because yes. you're trusting their... So, so in a, at a time like that, how do you handle extricating yourself or changing that relationship? Yes, so it comes back to really knowing who you are and what you want and trusting that the relationship that you have with the Lord and what you think and what you feel is not less valuable than someone else, even if they're in a position of authority. Yeah. Would you consider someone who's experiencing some of this uh, a mental health condition until it's righted? I mean, it can cause some amazing distress in life. Yes, it could be emotional, it could be mental, relational, spiritual, there are all sorts of wounds that we have. And the reason I wrote the book is to help people where they feel like those wounds are invisible to others. You know, it's hard to really put their finger on what feels off, so. But you probably, one of the, the keys would be you would see this repeating itself in your life over and over again. I mean, the subtitle, well, the book is called The Cuckoo Syndrome, but the subtitle is The Secret to Breaking Free from Unhealthy Relationships, Toxic Thinking, and Self-Sabotaging Behavior. I mean, probably everybody needs to read and evaluate yes. where, the, where, the, where the cuckoos in your nest might be. <laughs> want to mention also that Andrea is a graduate of Regent University and has a wonderful practice. And thank you for the book. It's fascinating and certainly touches all of our lives in some capacity. Good to have you with yeah, us. Thank you for letting today. me be here. It's been a pleasure. Great. Great mm -hmm. to have you here.